Louisiana Beer Reviews looks at the imported Hayward's 5000. Okay, well, the label says imported, so we know that this particular beer was made for export to the U.S. And it's from India. Obviously, an Indian wouldn't say imported. Um, it's an Indian premium beer. It has an alcohol strength of not exceeding 8%, <laughs> which okay. means it's probably 8%. Uh, world's favorite, written in the English style, OU, strong beer. Okay, this is an extremely popular beer brand in India. I have never seen it before, on, except on the internet. Ken from Massachusetts said, you ever tried Hayward's? I said, I can't get it. He said, okay, I'll send it to you. So thank you, Ken. Um, I have noticed that um, a lot of the Indian beers that I've tried, like Flying Horse and Maharaja have this foil cap. And they're usually in the 22 ounce, 650 milliliter bottles. In mm -hmm. India, they drink lots of beer, mm -hmm. the Hindus. They don't eat beef, but they drink lots of beer and they want it strong. Sounds like a good system to me. Another beer from this company is called Knockout. Okay. And that's a big one. Well, they have commercial. Out. Oh yeah, okay. and this was Hayward's 5000. I don't know why it's called 5000. It was introduced in 1978, so it's been on the market 38 years. Um, and it's extremely popular. And if you look at their website, it's all about what's, it's not the Haywards. They don't have their own website. They have a Facebook page and the SAB Miller India website. But it's all about, this is for the common man who's striving to break away from the humdrum of everyday work, you know, and um, mm -hmm. they even have the Haywards 5000 Academy, which you can sign up for. It's like a career oriented motivational academy where you go and learn to be like assertive and work hard and, okay. and get a good job. All things associated with beer drinking. Right. It's imported by John Wine and Spirits of Palantine, Illinois. I have not looked on that website yet. The ingredients are water, malted barley, rice, and or maize, and or sugar. Okay. So they're using a filler, rice, or if they have some maize, corn, Indian corn, or sugar, and hops, and yeast, and CO2, that's carbon dioxide. So it could obviously. taste different depending on what batch you get, huh? Now, they probably got it configured to where it will always be the same if they're using corn or rice. Because they're usually oftentimes using brewer syrup, which mm -hmm. comes from corn or rice, and they've got it manufactured in, on the wholesale market where it's just, it's like, doesn't have any flavor. Okay. I've talked to brewing companies before, and they say they just, just use stuff that doesn't really have any flavor. Okay. And if it does taste like corn or rice, something's wrong. Like, it shouldn't have that. That's what they told me. Okay, okay and ethyl alcohol generated during the process. Hayward's is an authentic, premium Indian lager mm. that hails as India's most preferred and popular beer. Very careful blend of select hops and malts and brewing process. process exemplifies timeless Indian traditions. Okay, so it is really popular, enjoyed worldwide now, although I just got it today. But I tell Ken, people, don't send this to me. I might turn around and go to international market next week and see it, right? Could happen. Uh, it is manufactured this was manufactured on july 29 2015. it's got the date guys Where's the, the international market in metairie they have a lot of that's Indian what i'm talking stuff. about they have the flying horse and the uh kingfisher mm -hmm. so they do but they don't change their stuff up too much so batch number 259 it has all the information you need here it's brewed in Aurangabad, maharashtra state hold this for me one of the indian states Okay, so from a big beer drinking company, let's check it out. Now, Flying Horse, I think, is only sold in the United States. It's just one of those beers that it's probably called something else in India. Oh, And they yeah. just ship it here. But if you go to India, and I'd like to go, but, you know, if somebody wants to send me $10,000, that would help. I would love to go. India is actually a much cheaper trip than some places you could go oh, yeah? to. The exchange rate is certainly in our favor. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I would like to go, and then um, I would try out all their different beer brands. There's also a special Foster's beer in India that is not sold hmm. anywhere else. It's like, I think it's called Foster's Gold or Bold or something like that. It's a real strong one like this. And there's also a Hayward's Bold a different Haywards that's maybe stronger. I don't know if it's stronger because I think in India the limit's 8%. Okay. Just because they drink in a lot and it's all real strong beer and things mm -hmm. get crazy and if they had it any higher than 8% they'd have real problems. Okay, 
That's my suspicion. Hmm. But anyway, you go there, most beers is eight or eight percent. There's a strong Budweiser over there called Budweiser or Magnum, I think. That's eight percent. Okay. And there's like Miller. It's a black label Miller and everything's strong with it. All right. And I admire that. All right. Well, I mean the food is really, really strong, like spicy. Super, Super. hot. When so, I worked at the Chinese restaurant, the Indians would come in there and say, do you have, a, do you have any hot peppers? I said, well, this food is already pretty hot. No, we want the hot peppers. So I would give them this sauce, and he would just, like, slather it. Oh, yeah, there. good curry. I like always fire. have to get it, like, mild. So they, they, they like these strong lagers that cut those, the heat. This actually this smells like a cider. Okay, uh-oh. That's not necessarily a good sign. Now let's uh, look at the appearance first. Okay. Not much head. Sorry, yeah. But uh, I poured it very gently. It's pretty yellow. It's a yellow gold, I think. Yellow gold, yeah. And if you look carefully in this 6.45 p.m. dying daylight, there's a lot of fine powdery sediment. You can see the chunks in there. Yeah, I do. Bigger, it's bigger and smaller chunks. And these glasses are clean, it's not dust. Okay, Raymond. You've ever had an Indian beer? Um, maybe. Not that I can recall. <clears throat> cider. There was Smells a little- like cider to me. There was a little green apple. Now, Maria Devon, the girl next door, she talks to me about beer and she's really into style. And she says that the beer judge certification program, BJCP, does allow some, they say green apple is allowed in beer. Some, mm -hmm. and these types of beers. Shouldn't be a lot. Well, it reminds me of the smell of a cider or a yeah. apple ale in the case of some. I'm picking else. up some of that green apple. I say green apple. Yeah. And. Part. I guess grain. Yeah, it's very clean. Like it's a very clean smell. Yeah, I'd go along with that. How about the flavor? Now, coming from India, you know it's been on a ship for probably months, and then it was in a store, so it's almost a year. It's not super fresh. You got to take that into account. Oh, I like this. In India, they're drinking it. You know, right? I quite like this. Huh. I'm picking up like honey topped Sara Lee bread. It's very sweet. It like it smelled like a cider and the sweetness reminds me of a cider. Like it doesn't taste like a cider per se, no. but it is reminiscent of that. And it It has some of the green apple in the flavor. Like or the apple, apple skin. skin. Yep. <laughs> oh yep, on it. Um the Sarah Lee honey top bread, I think, white bread. The honey, the cr and and kind of like, maybe like a bread crust, but not super crusty, or maybe there's like a smokiness. I don't know. There's something. It's not like a smoky beer, but there's a kind of like a bread crust, savory taste. Yeah, maybe it's a bread crust. You know how, if you like boil rice, oh, it's really good. the rice will have like like jello, jello, gelatinous stuff in it. The rice, and if you eat it, it'll have like that rice. It's almost like rice syrup mm -hmm. or rice pudding type globby rice stuff. In pudding. It. But the grits are from corn and rice pudding. It has some of that rice note. I don't know. It's almost like they use that and that's like that filler is that rice syrup thing. I don't know. It's hard to say, but it, there's something there yeah. from that. Yeah, I can taste it kind of like a rice pudding. Oh, now I want some rice pudding. Ooh, I haven't had that there's in a while. Yeah. There's some background raisin note. Which raisins also go in rice pudding. Yeah, don't you pick up a little raisin, like golden raisin? You know those golden raisins from California? Yeah. Not the purple raisins. No, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. When you poured this, I was nervous because I thought it was just going to be like like a plain, like a Miller kind of beer. like a Miller High Life type thing? Yeah. When I saw the color, I thought it was just going to be kind of a really basic kind of, I was like, ugh, we're... And y'all drink, you drink a lot of Miller High Life out in Alabama, right? On movie nights and stuff. I drink High Life if that's my only option. But I mean, you know someone that. Yes, I know someone who drinks a lot of Miller High and Life. And you said you did admit you did admit that you didn't hate it. Actually. No, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Um, it's but just not. But you thought it was going to be drab like that. You I thought it was going to be kind of basic, yeah. But this is actually really flavorful. Like, it has, like, a lot of layers of flavor. And the body, we didn't talk about the mouthfeel. I think the body's kind of high, medium. Not heavy body, but... No, but it's nice. It's very refreshing, but not... Is it high, medium? Let me... Let me. Super dry or anything. 
Okay, medium. And I'm getting a little grain husk, like husk, like when you're eating popcorn and you get a little bit of that, the kernel. Yeah. The finish is dry. It's not super dry, but there's a dryness. It's crisp. It's easy drinking. Now at 8%, I mean, you wouldn't want to guzzle too much of it, I don't think. I mean, you, you might send me if some you're more, stressed Ken, out. If you want. Drink People some in more India, they might have, hot, you know, stressful <laughs> jobs and they do maybe guzzle you know, in America, they can't show people drinking beer on TV. They'll show them pouring it and going like, but they don't ever show them drinking it. Really? It's like a rule. You can't actually drink it on TV. That's never occurred to me before. Watch it. But in India, there's no such rule. So I was watching those commercials for this beer. And they're, you know, they're in their, the language of over there, one of the languages, with some English, because, you know, England ruled India until 69 years ago, in fact. Actually, the king of England was the king of India until 1950, I might add, but regardless, that's only 66 years ago. But uh, what I'm getting at is that in the commercials, they're just drinking it, you know? Mm -hmm. They're like, ah, hey, where it's 5,000, and they're all <laughs> hanging out. Ooh. They're all hanging out at a bar <laughs> or a restaurant, and they're just like, consuming multiple sure. quantities, it. you know, drinking like fairly good quantities of this. And it's all showing on the commercials, people having a good time, and, you know, no bad behavior, just like, and I watched that commercial for the uh, Hayward's 5000 Academy, mm -hmm. and it was funny because it was like, you strive for the best. You want to make it in this world. You've had a hard week of work. It's Friday. It's time to unwind <coughs> with a few bottles of Hayward's 5000 or cans, you know, and the guy's sitting on the balcony, he's looking out, and he's like, I can make it in this world. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I can make it at least to, to, to Monday drinking this, right? Like, I feel... Right, so, so you're impressed with it? And yeah, it's really good. And it's shocking to you. I mean, I don't know, just looking at the label and then when you poured it, I was like, uh... I'm, but, you know, so I should have done the German alt beer, but this is really good. And I could definitely see me drinking... Next time I go get Indian food, I'm going to see if they have this when I go because I could see myself... You know, drinking this with a nice bowl of green curry or some... Um... Yeah, and I like how it says Hayward's 5000 recipe. Actually, most restaurants in India, you'll notice, will have the Kingfisher, which is I've only about around. 5%. 4.8 yeah. 4. to 5. So it's not going to be as bold as this. It's going to be a lot thinner. Body. Do you like it's Indian good. food? The Indian food I've had, I have liked, yes. And I like it fiery hot, so that's a plus. Um, food is so good. I would like to try the knockout. I'd like to try the Magnum. You know, of course, I'd like to try all the stuff from India. But, um, you know, one thing that's impressed me is that when we did a lot of Miller beers over the years, you were saying, ah, oh, that's okay. It's kind of dull. Well, you know, it's all right. And then we did the uh, Steel Reserve um, 211 in that black can, the tall can I got from George. And you were like, oh, this is one of the best beers I've ever had. <laughs> and and that was 8%, and this is 8%. So it seems like the alcohol volume might give it more body, and that impresses you more. Maybe so. Maybe I'm just boozy. I don't know. I'm just... <laughs> yeah, she's like, I'd like to try some flavored brandies. <laughs> I would. I would okay. do that. So um, how would you rate this? A plus. An A plus. Wow, that's a, a bold plus. statement. I know, that's bold coming from Elizabeth. Right, you're like the most critical beer reviewer <laughs> ever. From a person who generally hates most of what we review, doesn't hate <laughs> it, but picks it apart. I have to say, I've been doing reviews with you now for like six years, five, five years, yes. five years. And I think I like a lot more now than I did when we first started. You know, I think my tastes have definitely grown with trying more and more beer. You just beers. weren't used to beer maybe so much. At the time, yeah. I mean, I was in high school still when, we, when you started. Excuse me, I was like 17. No, you had just graduated, actually. It was in the summer of t 2011, and you had turned 18, so... Okay, well, I was still, still, a, still a baby, still a baby. Not um, yet in college. Um, yes. So, um... But I, I tend to like a lot more stuff. I just have my kind of... I'm just kind of... Maybe I'm just judgy. I don't know. I'm picky, I guess, with beer that I... I don't know. I feel like I like... I like a, you know, I like a fair amount. I could mention that... The most popular brandy in India is called Harvey's. And I did okay. see that. I did see that at International Market. Oh, cool. Harvey's brandy. And they were okay. saying, uh, oh, this is like, I was reading about it. They said, this is like 
the major brand in India. It's like everybody in India drinks Harvey's brandy. And it's like this brandy in Mexico called Presidente. They were like, oh, you know, in America, brandy is like a niche beverage. In Mexico, if you go to any place like this time of the evening and people are, men and women are sitting out on their porch talking, they're all drinking this Presidente brandy. They're just I feel like, like I've heard of that. This beer is really good. It bums me out that it's not around here. Like, if I was at a bar and I wanted something that was kind of kind of chill but still good, not I would get this. Yeah, and they're not going to have Steel Reserve 211. And uh, a bar is going to have, I'm trying to think of an 8% beer a bar would have. Um, they'll have Chimay Grand no. Reserve, which will cost you like $9 for a bottle at a bar. Yeah, so I'm not that, that. That's not going to What work. I usually get, I mean, usually if I go to a bar, I usually a small bottle. will just get a whiskey ginger with lime anyway. But if I'm going to get a beer, it depends, I mean, it depends what's there, what's kind of price-wise, right? Like, I'm looking more at the price than the alcohol content. So, um, Blue Moon, Who Garden, um, a bar I like to go into, a, a bar I like to go to in Tuscaloosa often, often has, um, like, a Beta Strawberry for $3. Um, that Terrapin Chocolate Peanut Butter Porter, they have a lot. It's usually not too expensive. So that kind of stuff, right? Oh, yeah, that's an interesting... Like, I know people, they'll sling around some PBRs. I'll just... I don't know. Too hipster, huh? No, it's not... Oh, I'm too hipster for PBR? No, no I say the PBR is too hipster. I feel like PBR, like, like five years ago was, like, a hipster beer. Now it's just, like, beer. It's back to the... That people drink. Yeah. The hobo beer. Um, but yeah, I, was about, I didn't want to say that, but yeah, well, basically. Well, in 1999, that's what it was. And then the hipsters drank it because it was cheap, and it was like the cool thing to drink. I'm drinking PBR. Notice what I'm drinking, people. Yeah, um, it was like that. And I was like, I was drinking Pabst Blue Ribbon when it wasn't cool, okay? So I was PBR when I mean, PBR I feel like that cliche cool. is still there. The end joke is, like, can I have some more of this? Yeah. So I have to save some for my written review. Right. But um, Now, there's a... I'm going to give this an A. I mean an A. You know, people are saying, you're crazy. That's a common beer in India. Everybody, it's like the Budweiser of India. You know, but maybe it is. Budweiser. Sorry, I'm going to get some comments about that comment. But it's better. Yeah, it's, <laughs> you got to call them as you see them. But I'm going to say it's really uh, bold. It's a bold beer. It has a lot of character. Um, if I was in India, I mean, obviously, I wouldn't be drinking a lot of this. It's 8%, and um, you got to watch out for that. But... Um, Real tasty. I really um, do think it's the possibly the best beer I've ever tried from India, and I've tried some good ones. I, I, I thought the Taj Mahal, the um, Kingfisher, which is brewed in America, by the way, from contract from India. I thought the uh, Flying Horse was wonderful, but I, I think this might have a little bit more. Uh, savoir faire. And I haven't tried any of those, so now it's like I'm set up with a higher expectation, and every other Indian beer is just going to be a disappointment. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. So um, When I go to India one day, I'm sure the beer will be... Excellent. And I used a French term, and I will mention that France used to own parts of India until 1954. But anyway, um, yeah, I, I'm going to say A. Hey, it's a solid A beer. It's not the greatest thing I've ever had. It's far from the worst. I mean, obviously, if I'm giving it an A. So I'm going to enjoy the rest. Got to save a little bit for the review. And I'm going to end this. We're. Okay, 8%. We're going to end this review by saying, y'all, come on down to New Orleans. Enjoy Game of Thrones Sunday night, folks. Yeah, I don't watch that. No, you're watching.